What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue everybody. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm gonna show you how I made these beautiful, delicious, smoky, cured, barky, delicious pastrami beef ribs. Coming up! It's pastrami day yet again here on Chud's Barbecue, everybody. And if you've never made your own pastrami at home, I highly recommend it. It is leaps and bounds above anything you're gonna find at a local sandwich shop or in the deli aisle. And so far on this channel, I've covered how to make a Texas style brisket pastrami, as well as a cold cut style pastrami where it's chilled and put on the meat slicer. Mm. So good. But today we're going for the biggest showstopper in barbecue, which is the pastrami beef rib. Something about that tender red meat on the bone with a nice crusty bark just begs to have its picture taken. So that's what we're gonna make today and it is going to be delicious. These are some beef ribs. These are some USDA prime beef short ribs I picked up at my local HEB. You can also find chuck ribs, which usually have four bones and are a bit thinner meat. And those come from the shoulder section where these are the short ribs, which come from more of the briskety belly area and are often sold as dino ribs. Now, typically when I'm gonna cook a rack of beef ribs, I won't do much trimming at all. Maybe I'll round off some corners or take off any flaps, just clean them up a little bit, but I'll leave the fat cap on because it usually renders down really nicely. But today, because we're doing pastrami and it's a pretty heavy flavor profile, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this top fat just so it's a little less heavy on the palate. Just gonna take it off. A lot of people like to take this fat cap off as well because there's a big membrane right underneath the fat cap, which can kind of seize up and cook a little bit weird. Again, you can do it either way, but today I figured I might as well take it off. Ooh. And that is looking pretty much perfect to me. Lovely marbling on this. You can really see how beautiful of a cut that is. As for the membrane, I'm gonna leave it on. Some people like to take it off. I usually don't. You could score it if you want, but it's really gonna help keep these bones together once this thing cooks to tenderness. So from here, we need to make a brine. Pastrami brine starts with some homemade pickling spice, AKA some coriander seeds, yellow mustard seeds, some allspice berries, some juniper berries, black peppercorns, couple of cloves, and we're gonna let these toast for just a little bit. Beautiful. Now we're gonna add some water. And the whole point of toasting these seeds is just to release their oils and get some wonderful flavor. Now we're gonna go with the rest of our spices, which include some red chili flakes, a cinnamon stick, some garlic, a couple of bay leaves, our pink curing salt. That's what's gonna give us our nice red color in our pastrami. Some kosher salt and some brown sugar. Back on the heat this goes to make sure everything is nice and dissolved. Once up to a simmer and nicely dissolved, in we go. Smelling fantastic, I must say. And then we're gonna go in with the rest of our water one gallon of water total. And I got some ice in there just to help the cooling down process. And there we go, that's it, that's our brine. And I made this the night before just so I could make sure that it cools down completely. Not a necessary step, you could just give it a few minutes, but because I thought about it ahead of time, I'm gonna pop this into the fridge and then tomorrow we'll inject. One overnight later, we have got a beautiful chilled brine. What I'm gonna do now is strain it out. And that's because I'm gonna be injecting this brine and we don't want any of these spices or berries or anything to clog up the injector. You can use whatever injector you want. A little syringe works fine, it just takes more time. This pump one works really well because it's got four needles on it. it makes very quick work of injecting something like a beef rib. <laughs> And now the fun part begins. We just start pumping this thing full until we run out of brine. Just as much as she will take. Make sure you're getting a nice little grid system going here to make sure you get it all the way evenly distributed. Not gonna lie, this injector kind of sucks. The needles keep getting clogged up and I only get one sprayer. Probably the last time I'll be using this one. So if you have a suggestion for a better one, let me know in the comments down below. Spraying everywhere, making a mess. And just like that, this thing is fully brined, feeling nice and engorged. So into the brine we go. Going bone side down that way, the meat isn't sitting directly on the bottom. Because if it's in contact with the bottom, the brine's not gonna have as much meat access. But we are fully submerged in here, so back into the fridge this goes for the next day or so. Today is Wednesday morning. I'll probably cook this on Friday morning. So I will see you then. It's Friday morning, folks, and it's time to check in on these beef ribs. There's a snake in my boot. Ooh, hoo, hoo, feeling nice and heavy. Definitely full of brine. I'm gonna go rinse this off real quick. Looking good. Let's get a rub together. Uh. 
Mm. Gotta love the smell of coriander. And because this thing is already seasoned thoroughly all the way throughout, we're just trying to add a crust, get that really nice bark going. So we're gonna go on with equal parts, 16 mesh black pepper, and some freshly ground up coriander. Beautiful. So simply enough, we're just gonna get this thing covered all over. Could go on with a binder if you'd like. Yellow mustard pairs pretty well with pastrami, but because this thing just came out of a brine, it is pretty wet and pretty tacky, so I don't think it's necessary. And because there's no salt in this rub, we can go on as heavy as we want without having to worry about over seasoning anything. And please, folks, don't forget the sides. I'm just gonna go on with a nice heavy amount on top. I'm not gonna worry about the underside. Rub doesn't really stick to that membrane. And we're probably not gonna eat that membrane anyway. So just focusing on the top and the sides. Looking good. Let's throw it on the pit. We got this pit rocking about 250, and that's where we're gonna start this cook. And on we go. I'm gonna aim the side with the thickest bones towards the fire. So we're gonna cook at 250 for the first few hours, then probably bump it up to around 275, maybe upwards of 300, until we get a beautiful bark, and these things are nice and tender. That is a whole bunch of chud chimneys. Let's go check on those beef ribs. We're about five and a half hours into this here cook and these things are looking real nice. Bark is starting to form right around 175 internal. So we got a few more hours to go. 10 hours later, these beef ribs are coming off the pit and they are looking absolutely beautiful. Smelling like some smoky pastrami, nice and barky, bones have pulled back. I mean, just look at that. What doesn't look good about that? But these are incredibly hot right now. So I'm gonna let these cool down to about 150 degrees internal before I slice in. They're probing nice and tender. They're still a little bit tighter than normal beef ribs at this stage, and that's because they're cured. But because the probe goes in like butter, I'm calling these done. All right, folks, without further ado, let's see how these beef ribs came out. Aim right between the bones. Yeah, I'd say that was a successful experiment. Those look fantastic. Tastic! Look at that color. Mm, smelling real nice. Let's get this other one sliced off. And there we have it, folks. A beautiful pastrami beef rib. Just look at that. That is a showstopper for sure. Beautiful smoky bark, nice red meat, tender, juicy. Smells fantastic. I mean, would you just look at it, folks? Come on, who doesn't love a good pastrami? And this might be its greatest form. I think I have to dive into this real quick. Mmm. Oh, good lord. Mmm. So tender. So smoky. That flavor. Unbeatable. Man, I can't believe that just pulled apart like that. Just a little. Ooh. Come on, folks. It's not even fair. Mmm. It got to melt in your mouth. I mean, this is just one of those sights to behold. Eh. Come on. And just look at that meat. So juicy. So succulent. Perfectly rendered and as you can tell we got full brine penetration all the way through that is undeniably pastrami mm -hmm. That is good that crust that bark that flavor so easy so simple it's nice those warming spices like the cinnamon and the allspice are there but not overpowering and that's kind of the beauty of smoked pastrami like this is like the smoke is there but it's not overpowering the sugar is there but it's not overpowering it's just a very well-rounded flavor oh nope. that is something else and it's also just a fun change of pace you know what i mean different flavor profile still nice and smoky uh, not to mention, this took about a day and a half in the brine as opposed to like a 14 day brine, which typical pastrami takes. So definitely recommend giving this one a try. But without further ado, I think it's time for the official taste test. <laughs> All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to make some absolutely fantastic pastrami beef short ribs. I highly recommend giving this one a try. It is so simple, so delicious. It's a showstopper for sure. But that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by hitting that like button. Drop a comment down below letting me know what you want to see me cook next. If you do give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.